This big monstrosity right here is the Super Beast, and it might be the most cost-effective way to get lithium power in your setup. But it has a big problem. It's not a 12-volt battery module. Out of the box, it's set up as a 48-amp-hour, 24-volt lithium iron phosphate battery bank. So if you want to use one of these, you've got to do a little bit of DIY. But after we get it converted, we're gonna have 96 amp hours of lithium power. To convert the battery, all of the existing wiring has to be removed and the pack will need to be almost entirely disassembled. Keep watching and I'll show you what I mean. Before you start working on the Super Beast or really any electrical project, make sure you remove all watches and jewelry. They call it the Super Beast for a reason. This is not a toy. Like any DIY project, you need to make sure you take safety precautions and be aware of the inherent risk with this type of work. Let's look at some numbers so you can see what I'm talking about. The Super Beast uses 48 of these 8 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. These are headway cells. They're arranged in groups of six wired in parallel. When you wire in parallel, you increase the current capacity. Six times eight is 48. After you reconfigure the bank, you'll have 96 amp hours at 12 volts. Each individual cell rests at about 3.2 volts. You don't change that when you connect the batteries in parallel. So if you need more voltage, you need to wire the groups in series. So the Super Beast connects eight of these parallel groups into series to get 24 volts. This pack was resting just a little bit higher. You may be asking yourself, what the heck is an amp hour? Simple, that means you can draw one amp for one hour before the battery is fully discharged. But you need to know one more thing to understand just how much power these lithium battery banks actually pack. And that is the discharge rate, also known as the C rating. If the C rating is equal to one, then you can draw one amp in one hour before the battery is drained. The discharge C rating on these headway cells is 15. That means it can discharge 15 times faster. In other words, it can dump all of its power in four minutes. That's 720 amperes of current within four minutes. At 24 volts, that's over 17,000 watts spread out over four minutes. And when the dead short, all of that energy becomes heat. If I slow down the footage of that dead short I just caused, the actual short lasted about four frames, which is about a 15th of a second. Generated enough heat to melt a small chunk from the terminal and from the pliers. And that's not a problem limited to the Super Beast. You're gonna get similar results anytime you create a dead short across battery terminals. And these lithium batteries are just much more powerful. This is why you do things like install grommets when you pass your power wire through a firewall and you always use a fuse on any wire connected to any battery. When I installed these down for sound batteries, I made sure to cover the terminals with some plexiglass to lower the chance of something falling on them and causing a dead short. If you're not comfortable disassembling and reassembling this pack, I'll make sure to give you some recommendations for ready to go pre-made batteries later on in the video. Why go through the extra hassle to strip this down and reconfigure it? Well, to save money. Brand new, these lithium cells are currently going for over for 20 bucks each. You can get them used from batteryhookup.com for about $5.50. So 48 of these cells would be $264. The Super Beast is currently going for $225. So you get the same 48 cells at a considerable discount. And if you want to save a little more money, I've got a discount code for you, DIY Audio. Check the link in the description for more information. And not only are the cells themselves cheaper, but the Super Beast comes with bus bars and a case to hold all the cells. Hey, here's a tip for you. Look for these connections right here in between the cells and remove them first. This will decrease the chances of causing a short if you're cutting through a bunch of wires. That won't help at all if you short out the terminals like I did. In order to make it easier to describe how to disassemble and reassemble the pack, I'm gonna define some terms. I'm gonna call the end of the pack with the handles the top. I'm gonna to call the side with the copper bus bars the copper side, and the side with the shiny bus bars, I'm gonna call that the tinned side. Both sets are copper. The shiny side has just been tinned. Now that all the wires have been removed, it's time to disassemble the actual battery pack. You want to start by removing the bus bars on the copper side. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket.
With those removed, now is a good time to familiarize yourself with the cells and the way they're laid out. The positive end is all shiny bare metal and the negative end has this black ring. Also take note of how the cells are arranged. The top right is positive and then two cells are connected down to one of the bus bars on the tinned side. At that point, they turn around and go back to the long copper bus bar. If it stopped here, you would have a 12 volt 48 amp hour bank, but it doesn't. It turns around again, back down to the other 10 to bus bar. And then from there, it connects to the other side to give you a second set of four cells in series. And that gives you 24 volts and 48 amp hours. Now you could take that longer copper bus bar and cut it in half. And then you would have a pair of 12 volt, 48 amp hour sections, and you could just wire those two sections in parallel. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So the next step is to remove these six long bolts that hold the case together. When that's done, you wanna flip the bank over and remove the tinned bus bars. And hey, just so you know, I'm not sponsored by batteryhookup.com. I purchased this battery bank myself. My long run plan is to use this one on my test bench and see if a stronger battery will allow me to test bigger amplifiers. And I couldn't afford stuff like this without the help of my patrons over on Patreon. So I need to take a minute to thank all of my patrons. You can see their names going across the bottom of the screen right now. And as always, I give an extra shout out to those $25 patrons. Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, Fargo, JD Mary and Baba. Now at this point, you want to remove these heat sensors if you have not already. You will damage that red outer cover when you do it, exposing the positively charged outer case. Make sure you cover that with electrical tape. At this point, you can now remove one of the center spacers. And then what you want to do is pull one of those cell packs out so that you can flip it over. You want to pay close attention to how this is oriented. I have the pack positioned so that the side with the tinned bus bars are facing up and the top the end with the handles is nearest the camera. It's just a matter of sliding out this set of 12 cells. Now that one of the sets is out, it's easier to see how this thing is wired. What we have here is two of the parallel groups that are wired end to end to make one group in series. So this piece will get you 48 amp hours and 6.4 volts. My multimeter is reading 6.59. If you probe in the middle, you should get around 3.2 volts. And when I test, I'm getting 3.29 to 3.3. Now you should not have to top balance your cells, but if you wanted to, you could unscrew the individual cells and do that at this point. The Super Beast case itself is just a little bit ugly. If you don't wanna use the case, you can always order some different bus bars and at this point, take apart all the cells. And of course, that would still be cheaper than ordering the cells individually. If you're gonna do this kind of work, I recommend that you get a multimeter. This one is unique because it will automatically switch from AC to DC voltage, so it's a really great tool for your average homeowner. It even has a non-contact voltage tester, plus it's dirt cheap. For more info, hit the link down in the video description. Thank you to Testman for sending this out. Now we're gonna flip those cells and slip them back into that cell spacer. Take a second to note the polarity. Right now, one fourth of the bank has the positive pointing up and three fourths has the negative pointing up. We don't want that, we need it to be half and half. So you need to flip over one more bank of cells. One thing that I did figure out, pulling this piece out, if you squeeze, the top, the bottom kicks out. So if you're grabbing this and squeezing, you're never gonna get it out. Now just flip the cells and reinstall the cell spacers. Take note of the notches on the cell spacers and make sure they match. You may have noticed that this thing is absolutely filthy. It is after all a used battery bank. So take every opportunity to knock off some of the dust. At this point, you might want to pause the video so you can take note of the alignment. This is the tinned side. The half closest to the handles at the top of the bank all need to be negative. 
When the tinned bus bars are installed, they will connect positive to negative, combining a pair of two series banks into a four series bank. I'm gonna go ahead and screw these down. You don't wanna strip out the threads. So do this with hand tools or use a driver with the clutch set to one of its lowest settings. Now flip the whole thing over and verify the voltage. The bank should be resting slightly above 13 volts. What you have now is four sets of 12 cells. Each cell is eight amp hours. 12 times eight is 96. These four sets are wired in series to get you 12 volts. But you're not done yet. You need to make a jumper to connect the positive terminals. To do that, this plastic divider has to go, so I'm just gonna hack it off with my Dremel. And the same thing goes for the dog ears on the copper bus bars. That piece is gonna need a few holes in it because it's gonna be used as a jumper to connect the positive terminals. I'll show you that in just a bit, so keep watching. The next step, we need to install either a BMS or an active balancer. I'm gonna go the balancer route, and I ordered one with a tiny little acrylic case. Like always, there's a link to all this stuff down in the description. Now this is a 4S bank, so I need a 4S balancer. A 4S balancer has five wires. The first goes on the negative terminal, then one will go at the end of every series connection. You can make those connections by looking for these little tabs in between the cells. And the bus bars already had threads in them for connecting these wires. After you make all those connections, you want to tape down or tie off all of the wires so you don't accidentally yank one out. And if all of this looks like too much trouble, I'm gonna recommend that you head to Down for Sound and pick up either the JP40 or one of the LTO 6.0s. They are, of course, a lot more expensive and they pack a smaller punch compared to the Super Beast. But all you have to do is charge them and install them. They're pretty much ready to go. In this shot here, you can see where I added the jumper. I saved the other copper dog ear so I can add a second jumper if I need to. Compare this to how the bank was originally configured. In the original configuration, the two smaller bus bars were each a different polarity. In this setup, they're both positive and the larger copper one is now your negative terminal. All right, y'all, it's time for the million dollar question. Can this big battery support a big amplifier? To find out, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. I'll make sure to put a link to it right up here after I get it uploaded. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I will see you on the next adventure.